All right. Welcome back to Chapter 13. This is Professor Waits, and we're going to start out by talking about classes and introduction to classes. So when you create an object from a class, you are instantiating that object from the class. Remember, our class is nothing more than a template to what an actual object should look like when you instantiate it. So we've already talked about that, and here is what a class declaration would look like. You start out with the word class, you give it a class name, and then remember you have the curly bracket, the end bracket, and make sure you do the semicolon, and then in, in between is where we're gonna do all our declarations for that class. So here's a good example. We've got our word class. We now are saying that this class is known as a rectangle. In fact, this whole class is now going to be the type of rectangle. We've got private and public. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. And then we've got some variables that we've set up. And we also have some methods. Now we're gonna talk about here in a moment, like I said, about this private, we're gonna talk about this public, we're going to talk about uh, using constant out the back of a uh, function. Um, let's not forget our semicolon. You can have um, methods under private, you can have variables under public. So those are called access specifiers. And in public, it can be accessed by functions outside of the class. While private, only the items can be accessed by the other members of that class. So let's go back here. Because these this is private, and let me do some erasing here for a moment. Uh, back it up a little bit. There we go. OK. Hopefully you got it all. All right, so because these variables are private, anything outside the class, if we have another function somewhere, they cannot use or see those variables. Only the items inside the class. So this set with can see and make use of this private variable with. We're going to talk about that here in a moment, why we would want to do that. But let's let's continue on right now and just talk about how you can have these two uh, access specifiers. And one, again, is public, where anything and everybody can essentially see it. And then private is only those items, uh, other items inside the class. And this is an example. We've already kind of laid this out where these are the private uh, variables and these are the public um, methods. And they can be listed in any order. So, you, you know, what we just saw was we had private at top and then public. It doesn't have to be that way. You can have public up top first and then private. Um, it can appear multiple times. So again, we could um, simply say, you know what? Do, do, do. We have uh, public here, and we got a couple of items. Then we have private, a couple of items. And then we can also do public again and do a couple items. If you don't specify something, it's private. So again, if you have a class, and let's see if I can, if you had a class and you did not specify either one of these, then all of these items would be private. It's worth noting that different languages have different defaults. 
So just because C++ uses private as their default when nothing's listed doesn't mean other languages do it. In fact, it's one of the things that you uh, will usually get in trouble with um, if you develop in multiple languages because you'll start to just assume, hey, I'm writing this function. I didn't put anything out front. It's going to be private. And it's not. It's just the opposite. It's public. So just make sure when you are developing, you know what those defaults are. Now, I told you we were going to talk about constants out the back of a function. And all that means, whenever you see the constants after the parentheses, is that um, the function will not change any data in the calling object. Remember what we've said in the past. If you can make your code as secure as possible, then you're going to try to, anywhere you can, where uh, function, where code should not be changing variables, um, do what you can to make it where, they j where the code just can't. Again, that makes it uh, less prone to bugs. It's uh, a little bit easier when it comes to maintaining the code because you can't accidentally change something that you weren't supposed to change. So in this case, by putting the constant out back, we're saying this entire function will not change any data in the calling object. So what about defining a member function? Well, when you want to define a member function, we're going to use what's known as the class name and scope resolution operator, which is this. And it's just two colons. And you'll see, let's see if we can go up to the top here. You can see none of that's here because rectangle is not there. But down in here, we're saying <coughs> when you actually want to define. So those are prototypes. And we know they're prototypes, by the way, because we got the semicolon right out the very back. Right? But now we want to actually say, what is that, uh, that set width? What is it supposed to do? Well, to do that, we have to specify that it's, the, it's part of the rectangle class with this double colon, uh, the scope resolution operator, the name of the function, and then any parameters we want to put in. These are two terms you definitely want to get used to, mutator and accessor. A member function that stores a value in a private member variable or changes its value in some way. And an accessor is a function that retrieves a value from a private member and variable. Accessors do not change an object status, so they should be marked constant. So mutator makes changes. An accessor accesses data. And again, they are right. If you already know that um, it's only going to be accessing data, you should mark it with const. So that way, you don't have to worry about down the road someone else or you or anything else coming along and accidentally changing data that shouldn't be changed. Great, so now we have defined a class, which again, remember, it's a template. So what do we want to do with that class? Well, now it's time to make an instance of that class. So to define an instance of a class, it's very similar to what we did with a struct. You use the type and then give it a variable name. Now, please, again, do not use um, single letter vars. But the only place it's I find to be acceptable to use single letter vars is in for statements. So, uh, and I guess there might be some other places that are similar, but again, you might see something like int a equals zero. You know, I get that um, it's the scope is usually pretty small, right? So it's going to be somewhere in here and we can kind of see it up there. I get it. Um, 
but uh, even then, I, I just get to where I, I tell people, it just at some point down the road, you're going to wish you hadn't done that. It's going to make your code a little bit more complicated to manage and, and to uh, maintain. So again, why not say for int count equals zero? So I digress a little bit because I always like to take opportunities to tell people, please don't use single digit uh, or single letter variables. But in this case, they did. So now that they've set up R, we can use R along with the dot operator. Remember that from the struct? So here's our dot operator. And we can call the method. Make sure you pass in the right parameters. Now remember, if you are if you are something outside of the class uh, template, if you try to call a member that's private, you're going to get an error. It's going to come. There's going to be a compile error. You won't even be able to start your code. So let's take a look at the example. Now we've already seen this class. This class we've been kind of working with. We've got the private and the public, so we understand that. And um, again, this is just to declare the class. This has got um, the prototypes in it. And then down here, we are going to um, actually define what these functions are. So we've got these functions. Now we got to define them. Now, FYI, this information at some point we will start putting in header files. And this will be in the CPP file, the class, the C++ file. Don't worry about it too much right now, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So here is rectangle with our double colon set width, which goes right up there. And then if we scroll to the next page, again, we've got the rectangle set length and the parameters. Here we're taking len and we're setting it uh, into length, which even though length is private, because it's, it's this method is inside this class, it can get to its own private members. It's kind of like a private party. Only uh, the people inside the club get to see the other people. We also have the get with, and again, here's that constant. So the reason on this is they are already saying in this function, we're not going to change any data. And that makes sense because in this, we're getting the width. We're not setting the width. So all we're going to do is return the width. And by doing this, uh, setting this constant, we now can always make sure that our code never messes up and is never going to overwrite that width. Same thing with the get length. We get the constant and we return the length. Here's the uh, final function, right? Oh, come on now. And it's set up just like we would expect. And now we've got the main. So we're, we know that we have a rectangle class. So let's first instantiate one, make an instance of one where we have, we're calling it box. And then we are creating some local variables. And that's the key here, local variables. We're doing some output and input, putting data into the object. Here we are calling the method because, again, we have to call the method. Why do we have to call the method, Professor Waits? Well, it's because you can't get to the width because it's private. So because this is in main and not inside the class, we cannot go box dot width. And we can't do box dot length either. Those items are private. So instead, and this is kind of a key thing to understand is for something we're going to talk about here in a moment called stale data is that by making these private, I have to make use of functions that I've set up that internally will update these guys. Again, why might we do that? Well, what if we wanted to have an integer 
Let's take a moment. Let's uh, do. I'm, I imagine that there's probably a function somewhere, some kind of button, something on this where I could press and it would clear the entire page for me. Um, I don't know it. Maybe I'll look it up at some point. But instead, you get to see me kind of color everywhere. Just fun in its own right. There we go. Um, so let's say we have a class. And we want to call this class grades. Well, we have private. And we want to say char student grade. And then we're also going to, because I, because remember, nothing outside can get to that student grade. So because of that, I have to set something up that can um, utilize that particular variable. So I'm going to say public. Did I spell that wrong? And we're going to say something... Um, as simple as void set grade. And then we're going to also, because again, remember, we want to make sure that you can get to the grade. Now, with this, I'm going to tell you a couple things. When I go and actually write out how this set grade should look, I'm only going to allow a user to put in A, B, C, D, or F. If they pass me in, let's say, a, a Z, well, I'm not going to change that char to a Z because now I'm going to let bad data in. So maybe I even... This is a common thing is maybe I change this to a bull. So that way I can also say when someone goes to set this grade, I can pass back a true or false of whether I actually updated the student grade. By doing that, I can um, control what data actually gets into my student grade. And the other thing is, is now when I go ahead and I need to get that information, I can guarantee because I've made the function the only way you can set this grade only accept A, B, C, D, or um, F, that whatever comes out of this char, out of this get grade, is going to be one of those letters. So there's one good example of why we use private and why we use these accessors and mutators. Now, uh, one other thing to talk about is that what else could we possibly want to do with um, privates? Well, let's talk a moment about something slightly different. So in this case, I have this variable password, right? And what I want to do is I want to make it to where people can set the password, but they can't get it, right? Because internally, maybe down the road, so I may set up a function, and I'm doing pseudocode here, um, that is going to be um, set password. And um, once you set the password, I'm not going to ever say git. I'm never going to create a git password. No way. 
But what I might do is say check password. And the reason why I do this is so when I create a, an object of a user, I can always go and get their data out of the database. I can go ahead and set this user's password. So now I go back um, on the UI side of things and say, okay, user, tell me what your password is. Well, I don't want to be able to get the password out because then you've created a, a, a setup where someone could start getting you know, messing with your data and pulling the data out and seeing someone's password. You never want to do that. So I'm never going to set an accessor for this password. Well, then, Professor Waits, what good is it storing that data in there? Well, sometimes we store data that can't be retrieved, so that way you can help with functions. Maybe it might be a constant like pi, or maybe it's a, a hashing algorithm key, something like that. Um, in this case, we set the password and we'll never give it back, but we do have this check and uh, my handwriting is wonderful. So uh, we've got this check password and what we can do is we can, whatever they type in, we're going to type, we're going to put that in as the parameter and this is going to be a bull and it's going to tell us true or false if whatever they uh, typed in matches up with this. And the reason being is, so that way when they type in the wrong password, we can tell them, sorry, you didn't get the right password, but there's no way in this um, class that somehow someone can get us to accidentally give the information, right? So I can always keep checking. I can check this password. I can check that password. I can keep getting falses, um, but I can never go, okay, all right, I don't really know the password, so let me call this method and get the password. I've, I've limited access to that uh, option. All right. Another reason is avoiding stale data. So as we said in, in this class, we have this rectangle and we have uh, a length and we have a width, which means we can calculate the area of a rectangle, right? And maybe we want to store that area as a variable within the rectangle class because we don't want to have to do that math every time someone wants the area. So when the first time someone calls area, we'll do the math, we'll store it in the object and call it a day. But if someone then comes along and changes either the length or the width and we don't update the area variable, we now have stale data. The area um, variable has become stale. So what we can do is we can create a method that went, or we can, anytime, uh, the, the method that updates the length and the width, and remember, because we made these private, so you can't access them straight out. But if you call length or you call width and you put a new number in there, we can automatically, in that function, go ahead and call another function that says, you know what, the data stale because we just updated the length, Go ahead and uh, calculate and store the area again. Very similar to what we've done in the past, we have the ability to uh, use pointers. We can then dereference pointers and um, and store them into other objects, just like with structs. If you want, if you have a pointer, and you want to uh, go ahead and um, make a call to one of the methods in the class, you're going to use the pointer uh, operand. And there you go. So here we are C outing the get length. So this is going to return the int for the, uh, I think it's an int, uh, for the pointer. And then we'll just inline. We can also use a pointer to dynamically allocate an object. So here we have rectangle and we've set it to a null pointer. If we want to dynamically allocate a rectangle object, we're gonna use the new keyword to set up a new rectangle that goes in there. By doing this, because we're doing it dynamically, this will always be a pointer. So that's why we make use 
of the uh, pointer operand. Whenever you set up something dynamically, please, 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 please know this, because I will take points off your homework, and you will get things wrong on the test if you don't remember this. You must delete that pointer. So there we are deleting the pointer. When we come back, we're going to go ahead and talk about why have private members. So until the next time, this is Professor Waits, and I will see you at 13.4. Thanks.